Good morning, I am Pete, also known as Risk for Rewards. I uh, just thought I'd do a quick video just because there's a lot of people who are probably waking up on bank holiday, very hungover, can't be bothered to read through all my statistics or any analysis. They just want to know straight up selections. So I'm going to keep it swift and um, go straight in with yesterday, quick debrief. Um, I picked a lot of my selections on Friday based on the good firm ground. Didn't expect them to water, didn't expect it to be bottomless. There's just not really a lot you can do about it. Um, Azor Blue won the handicap very comfortably, keep her on side. Um, I think that horse will be winning going um, going further forwards for Dodds. Obviously, Gale Foss may all no doubt bounce back. Um, going on to the next handicap, obviously, Turntable Majestic. Neither of them really ran their race. Uh, they, the ground was bottomless. Um, and after a few furlongs, once they got stuck into, unless they started finding, and unless you were in the front end of the pack, you didn't really stand a chance. So neither of them two featured. Um, going on to the 2000 Guineas itself, um, for me, it was a frustrating one because obviously I put up all the right cases. It was only two horses you could back, Chaldean and Norghost rode in. Both group one winners on soft ground. Um, and obviously at the last minute, I jumped ship off Chaldean, mainly because I was picking off the good. I just thought I could picture Little Big Bear rattling off the good firm ground. Um, and then by the time I realised, obviously the ground was changing and everything, the money was coming and it was way too short. Chaldean was flying in and was about four to one, five to one, um, mainly due to the Frankie de Tory factor. Um, so where where do we go from there? I think Ch Chaldean obviously is one to take out of the race. Royal Scotland's connection saying they're looking forward to um, having another go and that they could um, bounce back. But I'm not having that whatsoever. Like they said that last time when they were closer in the Dewhurst and yet there's an even bigger gap this time. Yeah, OK, he was unlucky yesterday, but I'm not having that you can bounce back at Royal Ascot. Would I back Chaldean for Royal Ascot? No, not at the moment. So much water to go under the bridge and you just don't know what's going to happen. And I would put a line through like over 50% of those horses. If you bottom your horse at the start of the season, that's that's your season over. And I think if it wasn't a classics day today and uh, tomorrow, well, today and yesterday, I think many of those will be non-runners. There's loads of non-runners today. Um, and I think plenty ran just because it was a classic. Um, but like I say, like if you if you give your horse a hard race, it could finish third or fourth, but that could be his last race of the season, or he could just not run to the level all season. So you've got to be so careful. Um, obviously, August rode in, uh, was looked after. Um, no idea where they go. Obviously, well, they go to the derby with him, but it needs to bounce back. It's a bit like the Fasal Vegas situation. It's a monumental effort to win the derby off that, but at the same time, it's, it's obviously Aidan O'Brien. At the moment, it's a wide open derby. Um, you look at your other runner, um, uh, Little Big Bear, way too keen, finished lame, struck into, so many different reasons. So it's just for me, I just sit on your hand. You look at the Commonwealth Cup and stuff, like I'm not thinking that Sakia's suddenly going to finish in front of Common, uh, in front of Little Big Bear, like the market indicates currently, just because of the, um, just because of the fact that... Uh, um, he finished ahead of him there because it'd be such different conditions. Good to firm. You're looking at six furlong, seven furlong, eight furlong races on fast rattling ground. Nothing like what we saw yesterday. So for me, just throw it in the bin. Um, Charlie Appleby, uh, runner in the last. Um, obviously, it was, it was disappointing. It was a striking start. Disappointing. The, the ninth of nine came um, in his form. So he's got three forms. Uh, one win, one second, and the ninth of nine. The ninth of nine came on bottomless ground. They said that he wanted faster surface. Obviously, yesterday... Um, it didn't turn into a faster surface, but he nearly got away with it anyway. He's clearly well handicapped, um, but unfortunately he just bumped into one Yuka left that had very good form, um, but obviously handled the conditions much better. Um, it was a good winner anyway, to be fair, Yuka left. So, but I just wouldn't lose um, track of. I put striking star into your um, notebook. Um, going forward onto today, because obviously that's what most people are here for. Um, what have we got? So first up is Adiar. I can't get my head around what's going on with that. Um, five to six out to eleven to eight. But um, he's a Group 1 winner in a Group 3, doesn't have a penalty, yet there's horses in here that have £5 penalties. So in, in reality, everything's in his favour. The issue is he's had 250 days off. You know this isn't going to be his main aim. It is going to be very soft ground. He does enjoy soft ground, but not this soft. Um, first time out, perhaps. So he could win, but he could also do nothing and then go on to win something at Royal Ascot. So he's an easy leave and just watch him brief for me. Um, going on to the next race and it's the handicap we've got hms president in there um second start for alan king uh ran a career best for alan king at 100 rpr at kempton um he finished second there after over an inadequate trip uh comes here off the same mark very well weighted in with uh, sem han last year's winner um he sem those two met at Newmarket in the past 
Uh, Sam Ham was the winner that day in a small field of about two lengths and he was getting one pound on the day. Uh, he gets three pounds off that rival um, today. Just think it's a consistent horse. The ground will suit. It's proven at the track. And Alan King hopefully can take him one better. Um, and he hopefully will be in the places at the double figure. Well, not double figure, about eight or nine to one. And then the other selection is um, Sam Han, um, last year's winner. He is up nine pounds from last year, but he has shown improved RPRs all year. George Baker's yard are in red hot form. Um, he's two for two at the track. And uh, obviously, you know, he enjoys it because he won it last year. He was campaign sparingly and he's a good, strong hold up horse. Uh, on to the next race. Unfortunately for most people, I don't know what price it will end up going by the time I release this to YouTube and Twitter. Um, but via Sestina, I gave it, well, I put it on the Discord to the guys at, uh, and, and girls, uh, eight to one, um, two days ago. It was quite a strong each way play for me. Um, George Bowie's horse. Um, he's only had two runs for George Bowie. Uh, uh, very, very eye-catching handicap winner at Newmarket um, for um, Joseph Tweet. Um, and I just I just think he's an upgrade going to George Bowie. Ran a very similar race under Jamie Spencer um, when finishing second on debut for uh, the for the yard. Um, both career bests for both Joseph Tweets and also for George Bowie have both come here at Newmarket. So he clearly handles the track. He's a strong travelling hold up horse. Um, not sure conditions will. Well, I don't think conditions will be of any issue. I don't know. I don't know if it'll improve his chances, um, but he definitely won't have any issue with it. Um, comes here obviously it's a step up it did win at france in a group three at the end of the year it's a step up into a group two here and there's plenty in here with obviously strong chances but um at the same time i just think it'd be disappointing if this horse isn't at least in the first three and he could be it could end up being a winner here um and at the eight to one who's good i think he's currently tra uh, around the 92 price this morning um i still would put that off as a, an each way price uh, andre farb has got to be respected between i think it's 2014 2016 he had the winner in 2014 the winner in 2016 and in um 2015 he had a 13 to 8 shot um finish out out the places but his, his runners are clearly sent over here for one thing. He's got two, uh, moving time and dimples. Moving time is Barcelona's mount. He's been in Kentucky last night, but flies over just for this mount. So he's obviously got to be respected. I think the most likely winner away from, um, hopefully my horse is Prosperous Voyage, who has the best form when finishing second to 1,000 guineas. Winner Bowie, um, of George Bowie's caché last year. And also coming into this year, um, he's been very... Uh, uh, sorry, last year he had many battles and is one of the only horses to beat Inspiral. He has finished three times behind Inspiral, but just has the best form on numbers. His hit RPRs of 115, whereas the rest are about 1110. So it's basically his form and then the rest. So I wouldn't put you off that horse at 72, um, but I just didn't want to back too many in this. So I've stuck with um, Sistina uh, each way. Um, on to the final race. Uh, I say the final race, not the final race at all, but on to the 1,000 guineas, the big one. And for me, it was you have two options. You either play Tahira, who looks a superstar. Um, well, did get his first winner yesterday. Obviously, everyone was knocking him for not having a winner for about five months. Um, or you play against her. She's got the best form. She's unexposed. Two for two. She destroyed Meditate. Um, she'll enjoy the soft ground. And the fact that World Centre is obviously a tip in itself. I literally have very, very little to knock her with. The things I will knock her with is the fact that she's <clears throat> she's very inexperienced. Um, winning a small field um, race over an island compared to coming across and taking on the guineas um, and, and in likely bottomless ground. This is another one is the fact that if she's not enjoying the ground, yes, she won on soft ground, but this could be very different. It could be tacky by then. And if she's not enjoying it, then they, they will not be giving her a hard time. So it is in the back of my mind. And you're looking at a 7 to 4, 15 to 8 shot. So I, basically, if you want to back her, I literally have nothing I can take, I can say against. But at the end of the day, depending on obviously what sort of punter you are, there are going to be days where you want to be slamming in like, oh, it's brave man's game, let's go. But this just isn't it for me um, because of the ground. So I'd rather just stake the same sort of amount. If you were going to have a tenner on Tahira, then I'd rather just scatter dice tenner on a, few, on a few others. So I've just gone elsewhere. I mean, Meditate has drifted to a more than backable price now. Um, she's around the seven to eight to one mark. She's got the second best form. And if you're saying that, um, if you're saying that the uh, winner to here is so clear by two and a half lengths, then I mean, how can Meditate be like about eight times the price of her? The only issue is obviously with Tahira, uh, with Meditate, is the fact that why is she drifting? Because this is a remarkable drift. She's gone from seven to two, and now she's up to around eight to one nines on the exchanges. So she may not even run, but if she does, I don't see it being an issue. But again, 
we saw both of O'Brien's and the 2000 Guineas run no race and both got pulled up. So it's just always a concern. The one I am really interested in is Charlie Appleby's uh, Dream of Love. Um, I think obviously a lot of people were not the Maidan form because it's out in Maidan, but she was making up. I think they were just literally having a bit of sunshine out there, and he gave he gave her a little nudge to try and catch more. She was about 15 lengths clear, coming to two furlongs out, and unfortunately for Buick, she picked up hand over fist, and it was she went like an absolute rocket, and that was on soft ground. And then he realised, oh, I actually need to push her here to um to make it look like I'm going for a race. Nearly caught Morge on the line, but didn't catch her. Um, and I just think, obviously, the Maidan form is always a bit suspect. But the other side of things is the fact she's got new market form. So um, the new the new market form is um, is a uh, solid behind Kerner Ka Fun, um, um, and she was still learning and growing there. And I just think in this soft ground, when you want to take a chance on one, she's around the eight to one mark. Um, and I just think she's one that she's worth a, worth a tilt, especially with, with Appleby being such a good solid trainer. So that's that's one on my list. Um, and then also Morge, uh, Morge, who I didn't didn't know if would handle the mile, but has won two races over the mile over, over in Maidan. Um, she's a very solid filly. She's in with all of these mares last year. She, uh, all these fillies last year. She was beat by the likes of Lazoo, Meditate, got form all of those. But she is proven at the, at the mile. She was tying up in the soft ground um, over in Maidan. But at the same time, like at least she's had a go in the in it, and she stays a mile. And I think she will be ridden to ride her race, as in she won't be. They won't be worrying about um, pulling her up because this is her third run, so she's going to be more than fit. So just in summary of the thousand guineas, if you want to back to hero, get your tenor on to hero, fill your boots. But for me, I'd rather scatter dice it. So obviously, with dream of love and meditate, be the two main ones, and a small bet on Morge. And in reality, if and I'd be just going win, uh, win only on all of those because. Um, it's just that sort of race. They could win, they could get pulled up. And at the end of the day, um, if, if any of those three were to win, then I'll probably win more than I would on Tahira anyway. So, and if Tahira wins, brilliant. I look forward to seeing her going forward. And like I said, it's not a bet, It's not a race you need to go absolutely nuts in. So on to the final bet of the day. And the final bet of the day is um, from the Jack Shannon Yard, and that's Rathgar in the 510. Um, and uh, that's quite simply, I just think it looks like a progressive horse. Last last year at Goodwood, um, got the win, power and away. I think all three ones were at Goodwood. Uh, comes here on handicap debut, has got form on the soft ground already, which many of these don't. And I just think there's, I think there's eight, eight in the race at the moment. So you can get each way fifth. Um, so each way, three places, uh, one to five. Um, so a fifth of the odds, having a nightmare there. Um, so I just think that, that he's he's got a good opportunity on handicap debut and he'll handle the ground whereas others may not um and uh i think he's hard to knock at an each way price so uh yeah that, that's all of my selections today i'll try and remember and go through them so we've got hms president and um kem Hahn. we've then got via sustina but obviously good word for prosperous voyage with the best form in the race you then go into the guineas and we've got um love Ooh. Can't remember. Uh, Dream of Love from Charlie Appleby. Obviously, I'm doing all this off the top of my head. Dream of Love for Charlie Appleby. Um, we've then got Morge as the cover bet. It wouldn't be the win bet, uh, the strongest bet. And then Meditate. So Meditate and Dream of Love main bets. Then Morge as the, the backup. And then finally, obviously, Rathgar in the final race. Um, hope you all have a brilliant weekend. Just remember, life's not all about betting. Um, it, this is a bank holiday so don't sit in and watch watch all the racing all day unless you've got nothing else that you want to do just go out enjoy it with your friends and families and stuff like that because it would not surprise me if you got to the end of the day and you hadn't had a single winner like me included because just because it's one of those days where the ground is going to be awful and stuff but at the same time could go through the whole card so got to be in it to win it so all the same enjoy your bank holiday I'll be back next weekend um, I'm Risk for Awards and goodbye <laughs>